Hello there, it's William from Boxer 2 Valve. And uh, last time we left off, we had just finished um, installing the wheel bearings on this front wheel. And in the meantime, the uh, brake discs that I want have come in. And the ones I'm gonna use here are from EBC. They're really pretty cool. So these brake discs are basically semi-floating. They've got little rivets in here with a kind of a wavy washer so that the um, brake rotor can, can expand when it gets hot. And if it does get any little bit of run out of there, that'll be sort of taken up by these fasteners. So it's a nice upgrade, I think, from the stock disc. And um, there's a left and a right of these the, so that the, uh, this would be like the orientation when installed. And you can see how the holes sort of are symmetrical in this way. Now they're marked on the part number, one ends in LS and the other ends in RS. Well, pretty basic, right side, left side, I'm gonna say. Looking at the direction of travel, here's the rotation. So this would be the right side. And so we're gonna put this one on here. And normally on BMW motorcycles, with probably very few exceptions, they put the nuts on the left-hand side. So we'll put the bolts through the right, like so. And then the disc inside here. And then I'm using new nylocks and these washers go underneath. So we'll get all those started. All righty. And then finally, once you've basically just uh, got the bolts all snug, you go in and torque to spec. Always check your manual for torque specifications. All right. Hey, William. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dustin. I got some bars for you. Oh, dude, I'm so excited. Wow, that looks fantastic, man. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? Excellent, good. excellent. I got the rest of them on the card. I'll go out there and get them. Okay, sounds good. Well, I got a spot here already to put everything. Wow. Those parts look fantastic. I appreciate it. Wow, look at that. Huh? There's a that's something else. Piece there. there it is, the makings of a complete motorcycle. Man, I gotta say, these parts look better than than the new. I've never seen such a nice, crisp paint job, and you really got the striping perfect. I appreciate it, man. You did a fantastic it. job. By the way, this is Dustin Maybin of Maybin's Concepts in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And as you can see, he does fantastic work. He does all our paint work. And it's one of the many reasons we like being in North Carolina or in Hendersonville, so that we got you nearby. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate the business. Right on. Yeah, it's easy to do good work for a good customer. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the paints you used and the processes. We used uh, all glazerate, um, you know, from start to finish. We stripped the parts down to the bare metal and the uh, raw fiberglass, you know, the base material. Uh, you know, we, we reprimed everything and brought it back up, did all the body work, blocked everything out the way it needed to be. Um, you know, used the correct glazerate black and uh, did the striping on top of the clear. You know, you were real specific about the stripes, so that helped us do our job the right way. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the stripes are just typical one shot, you know, uh, nothing special. And um, you know, then just polished them out just like we do every other job, you know. So it's a, gla a glazerate from the ground up, glazerate uh, primer, base and clear. So everything is. Sure looks nice. Man, the reflection's incredible. Well, great. Well, I'm gonna, all excited because it's perfect timing. Right. I'm gonna finish working on the bike and put, put it all together when I get it Done, I'll cruise by and show it to you. Do it, man. It yeah. really puts the enthusiasm back, huh? Right on. Cool. Totally. Appreciate the business. Thank you so much, Thank Dustin. You. Good you. to see you. Have a great day, Thank huh? You, okay. Bye-bye. Well, right on. So now 
we've got these parts back and I think we should start making this motorcycle a motorcycle again. So get to work. Well, that was a pleasant surprise and the timing couldn't be any better because I need the front wheel off to put the front fender on and so I can put the fender on now and put the wheel on for the last time. So that'll be really, really cool. I can't remember if I tightened those or not. I better double check just to be sure. I think I did, but it's not be good to leave one. Oh yeah, all good to go. Man, these parts really look great. This is gonna be a really cool bike. So where to begin? I think we'll start, since we've been working on that front wheel and the brakes and all that good stuff, we'll start with the front fender and get that on there so that we can put the front wheel on and get that buttoned up. And I mean, really beautiful, even paints the inside, you know, which not everybody does. So it's really nice work. So I'm gonna just sort of drop the whole assembly like that. Sort of get that all out of the way. And then very carefully introduce the fender into here. There we go. You just need to very carefully finesse it into place. Make sure not to scratch anything. Okay, at this point I could put the reflectors back on that came off of there. From a safety standpoint, that's probably the right thing to do. But from a the kind of a aesthetics, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to put some slightly shorter bolts in and put it together without those. But that's just what I'm going to do. That's not what I recommend. Okay, now I'm just going to put these calipers in with the top bolt just to hold them in place and then check the alignment of the brake line is looks good. So these are little plastic uh, clips. They oftentimes get bent and distorted. Their job is to hold the, the cross of a brake line in place. So I'm just gonna put new ones in and they basically just go right over the brake line and then you put a nut and washer on top of that and that holds everything into place. There's one for the left, one for the right hand side. There we have it. Fender is on there, it looks awesome. And now we can go ahead and put the front wheel on. Okay, now because those clips are in there that I just put in, the calipers don't fall down as far. It's possible to get the wheel on if you're very careful. Because you have to get these calipers spread on both sides. So just slightly pull them out and bring the wheel in. Try not to distort the lines too much. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so I got the basically the wheel in place. My brake lines are routed just the way they need to be. And I just put the top bolts in to hold everything in place. And now I'll put the front axle in. It's always easier to put the wide space in first then the, the thinner one, put the axle through. Snug down the axle and then torque it to the proper specification. Once again, refer to your manual whenever torquing anything. And then, and then we'll go ahead and tighten down the pinch bolts before proceeding. You never want to forget that. Oh, 
Okay, and then we'll torque the caliper bolts as well. Awesome. Man, already looks a lot better. <laughs> okay, next thing that I'd like to do is I'll show you. Okay, so the next important part of this uh, procedure is, I think, to get the wiring kind of sorted out. And in order to do that, we left all this kind of alone a couple of episodes ago when we built all this stuff. And we need to have the fairing installed so that we can include the wiring for the gauges. So the next step is to get that fairing put together. So let's move over and do that. All right, let's get down to the task at hand. So here we have the freshly painted fairing. And this is actually a Siebenrock fairing. It's uh, very similar to the fairing, the original BMW, but it has a little bit higher area here, which gives you the ability to um, use a little bit taller handlebars. And it's, it's, I think, a bit of an improvement over the original even. It's a very stout, nice piece. OK, there's a little bit of things we got to do to make this all work. Um, got a few parts here. Just an overview. This is going to get riveted on to, this instrument panel is going to get riveted onto the fairing. And first thing we need to do is put this part on, I think. This is a little rubber gasket that goes around and seals around the headlight. So we'll put that on first. And to do so, this is going to take a little bit of time to tack up. So first of all, we're going to open this. I've got this Liquid Molly 8010 um, rubber uh, glue. It's really cool stuff. And so what we do, we have to put it on both surfaces, let it tack up for a bit before we can put the part on. So I'm just going to go around. Very carefully put some right on the outer edge all the way around. Okay, I think I've got a pretty nice even layer all the way around and you just have to come down a little bit off the top. About, it's about a centimeter, about the width of uh, the step on the gasket. That's all you really need to put glue on. You'll need that, leave that to tack up and then put some on the gasket itself too. Okay, to get the best adhesion on this, it's good to let it set for about at least five minutes, maybe 10, and get it nice and tacky, and then it'll go on and stay on. So moving on to the next thing, we're gonna be putting these gauges in once we get the dash panel installed, and just kind of realize they're a little bit chipped up. Um, such a nice bike. I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint those. So while that's tacking up, I'm just gonna mask these up and um, Give them a little bit of sanding and in a bit we'll put some paint on there. Tape fits perfectly right in there. Let's take a sharp knife and slice into the corner. Okay, cool. So those are ready to work on it a bit. I think in the meantime, this is probably tacked up enough. Yeah, it looks about right. So t just going to start on one side and seat that right on that edge and work that around. Cool, just want to visually go around and look and make sure that the gasket is seated nicely all the way around. There's a edge. So make sure that's nice and parallel to the opening. Looking pretty good. Okie doke. So now it's good to let that set up while 
um, you know, the, the, the glue sort of cure so you don't knock it off when you go handling it and pushing it out of the headlight. So back to this. Just using a little paint cleaner thinner to um, get all the residual dust off of there and so, so on. So just need to take it, take most of it down. You don't have to take all of it down, just get it all smoothed out. I'm just going to put some tape around the outside of the gauge too. All right. And then to paint it, I'm going to use this stuff here. It's uh, from Worth. It's a satin black trim paint. I've been using this stuff for years and it really looks good. It has a nice finish to it. You can use it on a lot of things. And one of them is the bezels on the instrument. So I'm just going to run into the other room so I don't stink the place up and shoot these and be right back. Okay, it won't take long for that to dry. That's one of the cool things about that paint is it dries quickly. So there's not a lot of, it's not gonna really put us behind on this. Okay, so moving right along here. Okay, without, this, this hasn't really had enough time to cure, but it's okay, I'm not gonna disturb that gasket. What I'm gonna do now is with these cup rivets, attach the dash, Board to the fairing. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the um, rivet fits through, which is oftentimes the case on a newly painted fairing that they don't because the paint kind of collects in there and all that sort of thing. So these rivets are just as I thought, six millimeter in diameter. So we need to make sure that those holes are right around that size. Okay, so I've got this sort of tapered, slightly tapered rat tail file that actually is right at six millimeters, which is pretty cool. And so I'm just gonna, once that can be inserted all the way, I think we'll be good. I'm just gonna give it a few twists to gradually Enlarge the hole. And this is a clean way to do it without cracking the paint or anything. So as opposed to using a drill bit, I wouldn't want to do that. It might snag and ruin your day. So now the rivet just about fits perfectly. Looks like it has to go pretty much in all the way. Perfect. Perfect fit. Okay, I'm just gonna do that nine more times. Now we can attach this thing. Now to do this, you need this special tool. This is something that we offer. It's a special tool. It's a perfect reproduction of the original factory BMW tool and what this allows you to do is install properly one of these copper rivets. These are used on the S fairing, but they're also used on the RS too, if you're ever doing repairs to one of those. Okay, so we've got the, I got all the holes sized properly. Now let's make sure that the fit is good. I'm gonna lay that on and see that my holes line up and how they line up. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna stick the rivet in. Sometimes you have to just finesse them just a bit to get them all to go in. We are talking about two plastic parts that have to come together. And actually, in this case, I'm gonna have to probably just take a little bit off the top here to get that to fit right, which is no big deal. You just have to be patient with stuff like this. Sometimes things fit perfectly the first time and sometimes you just have to make a little adjustment here and there. It's like with all sort of motorcycle parts that way has been my experience. So let's see, just thinking a little high maybe in this area here, it's not gonna take much 
think, and it's going to be covered so you won't see anything. I think if we just take a little bit off of here. Maybe a little bit of the paint sort of got globbed up there. Okay, let me try that again. It wasn't off by much, just a, maybe half a millimeter or something like that. Okay, there we go. All right. It's a good idea to put a good number of these rivets in so that you can address any fitment issues before you commit to anything. Okay, so I've, I've got all 10 of these copper rivets through the holes. And admittedly, a couple of them took a little bit of finessing to get through, but it, at the end of the day, it all worked out just fine. So now that I know that everything's gonna line up, it's gonna save me a lot of grief later on. And so now I'm gonna take this tool and start crushing the rivets. So this tool, you set this on the inside, like so, and screw this into the tool. Okay, now before you go ahead and start compressing the rivet, make sure that it's seated all the way and give it a good amount of pressure on both sides so that you have a little bit of the copper rivet protruding. You want to make sure, because if you not, don't have that, then it's not going to, going to really work out. So pull that through as far as you can. It puts hold pressure on it while you turn the tool and compress the rivet. You tighten this up pretty good. Cool. And so now that's flared that rivet out in that hole, and it's a good solid bond. And then we can go through and do that to the rest of them. Pull that nice and snug through before you start to compress the rivet. There you have it. Very tedious process. You just have to be patient. There's no other way around it. But now we've got a good solid bond with these rivets and it's all true to original which is cool. And so now the next thing we can do is put the gauges in. So I'll go see how the paint's drying. All right, well it's all working out pretty well. This is done and then I just put another coat of paint on those gauges so that'll be a few minutes. So there's a couple more things we can do this fairing. Um, this is the uh, fairing installation kit which comes with most everything you need to install. Um, a lot of the little rubber brackets and things like that. And what we're looking for right here now are these little angular brackets. These have to be attached to the fairing. So we got a couple of those. We've got a couple of grommets that need to go in there. And these spacer sleeves that go in the middle. And then we should have some bolts in this bag. I think we will. So these are going to be the short ones. They're like six by uh, 10 roughly. And let's see, a couple of wave washers. There we go. All right. Yeah, so these get attached like so. It's easier to put the grommets in first. It's a lot easier to fiddle with them like this than it is to fiddle with them when they're bolted onto something. Straight about like that. And then you push this little sleeve in, just like that. It keeps it from collapsing when you go to uh, tighten the next bracket onto it. First, I'm just gonna make sure that the threads, in, threads are okay. Then we get too much paint on them or something like that. Just before I go, should be fine. I'm sure Dustin plugged those off. So we'll just set those in like so. All 
Cool. Right, so there's that. Okay, these look much better. At least there's no big chips in the paint. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pull my masking tape back off again. Here we go. Looking good. On these instruments, there's a little O-ring that goes in there. A lot of times you wouldn't know it because a lot of times they're cracked and they disappeared a long time ago, but there is supposed to be one. And so we're gonna put one on there. Helps to keep the gauge from rattling around mainly, I think. Okay. So usually the clock goes on the right side and the voltmeter on the left. So now we're just gonna kind of carefully press this through and have a look to make sure that everything's nice and centered. Okay, there's two, there are two brackets. They look like this here. This one goes on the clock. There we go. And this one goes on the voltmeter, just like so. Okay, now just double check to make sure everything's still nice and centered in here. Looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna tighten these down a little more, these little thumb screws. So quite some time ago, um, it seems like an eternity actually, probably almost was, we, we made this wiring harness when we were messing around with modifying the harnesses and that sort of thing. So now we finally get to put it to use. It's always good to do stuff in advance. It makes you feel good later on. You don't have to do it. So this is how we left it back then. And the one with the red wire is going to go to the clock because that's powered all the time. And the one with the green wire and black stripe is going to go to the voltmeter because that's the switched hot. So that's one way you can remember that. We're just going to plug these babies in. Very simple thing to do. There we go. So now this thing is pretty much ready to install. So here's that wiring harness we made. We made it a little bit long. It's probably longer than we need. We can always trim it. Better too long than too short. And Everything is all pretty sano in here. Our two brackets installed, and really, essentially, we're ready to put this on the bike. Just a couple things we have to deal with first. I'm not going to put the windshield on yet. I'm just going to do that later, and the reason is because it's, there's some certain things we're going to do on the bike. It's just easier to deal with not having a windshield there for right now, and it's easy enough to do it when it's installed on the motorcycle. So to install the fairing onto the turn signal stocks is these bits and pieces here, these eccentric bushings, these little uh, flat bushings and these metal caps here. So the, what you put on first is just these here and stick them all the way on. And set these aside, they come in handy in a moment. Now, very carefully, Slip the fairing over one turn signal. All the way. Like so. And then you just carefully sort of spread it as you slide it over the other side. Just like that. I'm just going to make sure that my gasket kind of Kind of help it a little bit to get over that edge. And for the purposes of doing so, just a little screwdriver comes in real handy. Just sort of hit that, pass that lip. There we go, like so. 
Okay, now we can kind of look and see how that's fitting. And the next part that goes on are these eccentric bushings. These get pushed on. And you kind of see where it sort of wants to be. So I'm going to follow that for right now and just put this, this thin side up. Whoops, that slipped off. That's not so good. Okay, we'll come back to that later. Just kind of fiddling around to get it all lined up. This in here like so. So I've got the bushings kind of partially pressed in and it all kind of will come together. I'm just going to take a screwdriver and sort of help the gasket get over the edges of the headlight bucket like so. And now move around to the back side. So the next thing are these little struts I'm going to put on. These are original BMW parts and these connect the fairing to the brackets that we put onto the upper fork bridge some time ago when we were assembling the forks. They look like this here. And I've got a handful of hardware too. I'm just going to throw that in here right now and set that aside so I can get to it. And I'm going to get these struts put on. So you'll notice on these struts that one side is basically flat like that, or the other side is in the middle. So it's the tabs toward on the bottom. This one's in the kind of right in the middle. The one for the bottom, this one here, is the one that you put against the bracket on the triple clamp, like so. And they put the washer on the bottom and a lock nut. That's, why, that's like one of the reasons why I didn't put the windshield on now, because it's just a lot easier to deal with all this when you can actually reach in and work on it. Okay, so now the next thing is these longer bolts. Take two washers, one on each end, and a nut, and go like this. Right now, I'm just going to tighten these fasteners down a, just snug because we need to later on adjust everything, adjust the fairing. And so they don't need to be super tight right now. We we'll have time to come back and mess with that later. That's starting to look pretty cool, I have to say. All right, now I'm going to go back to these little grommets from before, try to get those positioned. Sometimes I need just a little bit of help to get pushed into the hole. So I've got to be super careful here just to kind of make sure that they get in there correctly. Once you have this bracket, this, once you have this grommet pushed in all the way, then you take that other little rubber piece that went on first, push it on the part of the grommet that's protruding. And then this guy goes right over the grommet like there. And it fits only one way because it's also kind of off-centered for, uh, for the eccentric opening. And then push the grommet on all the way. And now that's all going to hold itself together, especially after you get the turn signal installed. Line that up, clip in there, and now push that home, and now that's all set. So I've got kind of the thin end up on this side and thick end up on this side. So I'm just going to rotate this one a little bit. OK, 
Okay, it's looking pretty good. You can see how this is a lot taller in here than the original BMW fairing, but I think we're gonna be making some adjustments to the angle, but that's all kind of a final adjustment sort of thing. Okay, so we, get, we have the fairing on now. It's base, just basically adjusted. We're gonna fine tune everything when everything comes together. Every, a lot of things come to, into play. The headlight adjustment, um, the mirrors, things like that. And, um, but basically it's all mounted up and the fasteners are snug, but like I said, fine tuning is yet to come. The next big thing we gotta do is wiring. We've got, first of all, the wiring coming from the instruments that we just installed. Those are gonna go through a grommet and gonna come into the headlight here. We've also got whoops, these wires this was the original um, gang plug that went to the RT fairing, to all the lights in the RT fairing and everything there. And this was the headlight. So all this stuff's gonna come together and come up through here. But that's probably a video in itself to put all that together. So we're gonna say, we did pretty good. We got, the, we got to meet Dustin. We got to install the wheel and fender. We got to assemble the S fairing and um, install it onto the bike, basically speaking. And uh, next thing we need to do is uh, keep moving along on this and can't wait. And it won't be long, I promise. We're gonna be on it here real soon again, uh, continuing on this project, because this is really starting to be a lot of fun. And in the meantime, so that you know when that video comes out, make sure you're subscribed to the Boxer 2 Valve YouTube channel, subscribe to our newsletter, check out all the parts, in the links below and on our website. And stay warm until next time and keep the shiny side up.